Okay, my friends, this is yet another one, amazing one. Right there is location Grotniki, you're able to see. And I'm taking you right now to a city called Lechitsa. Lechitsa because it was difficult for the Russian to properly pronounce the name you're about to hear next. So the Ruskis, which they meddled in absolutely everything, came up with this location here. And that's a good thing for me too, because I know about the construction of the area that went on eventually. Eventually they made a mistake because I memorized what was built new in this area as well. So that's going to cost them some extra. Uh, the first location that Russians brainwashed on was exactly as you see right here. This is the house right there. This is what they brainwashed on. Um, how the gentleman who works at this place uh, is a security officer, works at the front gate. It's like a part-time job. His real job is a military officer. He is a military officer uh, the military base you're about to see next. This was one of the locations also that brainwashed on this very house right here. And then this apartment complex on this is how he is staying in here. Why this? Because man tried to help, he tried to assist, he tried to give an idea about... It's a dictator, right? He tried to help me out under MK Ultra about... You know, giving me idea that I could use that something that I know about yet another person and so on and so once the Russians find out about this this here is what basically happened and it was severe dictatura was having me basically walk back and forth torture me here in the street in this area that was a dictatura now it's again dictatura because they're in my room basically the same people involved in this thing and then was this third location right here that was also used. Uh, in this house and the house next to, actually the construction was done. They were doing some upper floor uh, renovation of the house you're about to see. So, you know, I wouldn't know about this stuff I wouldn't if I wouldn't really be here. So they also didn't pay a lot of attention what they were doing. They did some renovation here in this house. And then I'll take you to the to the location that really is his location. You see, we go from Lenchitsa. We go, we go from Lenchitsa. This is how you probably pronounce Lenchitsa, but in Russian they didn't know how to pronounce this because to them uh, it sounds so similar, the same as Lezhnitsa Vielka. You see Lezhnitsa Vielka right there. You can see it, Lezhnitsa Vielka. This is his real location. The Russians did get a hold of this city as well. Um, and got me in exactly this complex, this, this housing complex right here. I'm going to point you out the house. What I can tell you, these houses were built, and I should say finished sometime, house you're about to see 2015 something like this in the backyard they had very it was very very um trashy and this was common to all these houses and they had to fix this they had to clean in 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 the back that you see right there this this stuff was all messy they had to clean these things big time in some they have removed in some households but this here was rearranged big time yes I was in this house I was in this area 
Ruskis had me walk here back and forth. And the last location to me the most improbable. You know why improbable? Because MT Archer itself is a brainwash. And so the one that wins in this game is the one that washes, brainwashes the most. It's actually not even the Lezhnitsa Vyoka like he suggested, but it's in a nearby area. Okay. In a little bit I'm gonna show you again the same thing. And this is what I have pointed out as most likely improbable option, option that I have suspected that Russians set me up with. On my surprise, this was the correct option. This really was his house. And the, what changed here, I remember they put the ATM and stuff like this. I can point out that stuff too. I know the area a little bit about what changed. Uh, but, you know, this is just from the Google Maps. Uh, to get a real taste about it, I would have to go there. The house that you see, this one right here, this this block building, this apartment building is actually really his building. That one right there, you were able to see, right? So, he is employed at this military complex you are about to see next about which I also happen to know a little bit something as I explain in continuation in the video. This one right here, I was inside of this military complex and the gentleman confirmed this by saying yes I know. I explain everything in continuation in, in the video. That's another MK Ultra proof, a beautiful one too. Uh, 
I just can't hear me. <laughs> I don't think. I think this is your house. I'm quite sure. No, no. This is not your home. No. That's nice. Okay, let me just do something. We will here. Why are you here? And one moment, I was going to show you. One moment. I have it here in the middle. I have a little spot. No, that's what I want to show you. So then this one here is the right one. I'm going I'm to show you. Because I made a movie. This one. This one. This one. Okay. Luckily, I can find a little bit, and so I can describe how long it's going to be inside. Luckily. Luckily. But... Okay, it was a really interesting day today and I figure out by basically repeating the same procedure as I did for the state employee who works at our facility and is from Lublin, that's on the other side of the Poland, uh, I figure out quite a few interesting uh, things about this whole thing. You know, number one, number one thing is that I am quite shocked in respect to MK Ultra. Uh, I got to say, I'm I am really, really shocked about it because I know, stuff I already have stated. This thing went on like basically from '95, end of the '95, and all the way to 2017. That's one thing. Okay. All right. From '98. And all the way sometimes to 2017, when I filed for the political asylum in Belarus, first and only up to 2000, mid-2006, I was brought back to Poland from overseas, from the U.S. And then from Slovenia, I was brought back too, to give me occasionally updates on what is new in Poland. The worst part about this MKL tray is not only that you would observe towns changed, um, I'm gonna say construction, businesses change and so on, stores, uh, which is really really confusing, but Russians would have like completely free hands basically to do whatever they wanted to do with me. And it's like fascinating to me to, I don't know, I don't understand really, you know, there's like a lot of, you know, all kinds of views you can have on this situation, but it all depends how you want to see this thing as on like on everything in life basically it's how you want to see this thing as you know it really really depends on how much you want to zoom yourself into into whatever you want uh, or I should say however whichever way you want to see something else you know so question here is what you want to see really this is how I see it is uh, it's like about just about everything, isn't it? What is it you want to see something, you know? The main thing here for myself is basically 
what how I want to see my service and just as, right now I have spoken to a security guard here in the center who with his best intentions wanted to help me out just like all these Polish people here with stores with including neighbors here from Grotniki people and so on just wanted to help me out but then again what you know how much you as a human being can do yourself you know you got best intentions you want to help out but what about the politicians what about the people that have allowed here in Poland Russians to do whatever they want basically give them free hands to do whatever they want to do and this is really really interesting one it's a really really interesting one because you know at first what I did was I pointed out the wrong city uh, he said to me Vilka uh, Lezhnica and I pointed out something like Lezhnica, Lezhnica something like this too and I'm gonna show you okay and you know it came to what did it came to this this is really interesting it came to that I did point it out his location at the end you know at the at the end as the last option I pointed out his place but isn't it amazing that before that I have found another four locations for which I was certain were his location his home basically now this is basically what really really scares me that as when person wants to help a Polish person in Poland wants to help it scares me it scares the hell out of me that it's actually a Russian KGB that had privilege to act instead of one basically outsource him by pointing me other few locations for like extended amount of time brainwashing me violently with all types of garbage and I can tell you this was like a super super extensive brainwash they did in me KGBs Russians right here in Poland and it, it really is fascinating it's fascinating and it brings me like to almost to the last location it almost could be a last location if I would fall for the brainwash for the BS um, throughout this procedure and this is an, an original tape um, a gentleman from Chechnya is very connected to the police department it really is suggested that under MK Ultra, if things somehow if they would not see me as an option here um, if they would not see me as an option here in Poland as if I would express too strong attitude toward the Russians or something like this if I would become unacceptable it would be a Canadian leave his child would hold in hand and he would take one in front of me um, from the tree and stuff like this and there really is a tree that uh, resembles leaves from Canadian flag uh, he did that kind of stuff he did that part of the procedure and it's 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 really this is a stuff that really really these dots really really connect beautifully you know they really really connect beautifully but before I go to the video, I'm going to give you a little bit about who I am. So you're going to save those leaves for the Warsaw, maybe, not for me. When I was in the military, let me explain. I was the first generation of the military in Slovenia, regular army, uh, independent Slovenia. This is to be Yugoslavia before, and then people had enough of this um, but it was not only in Slovenia it was in six other republics uh, they no longer could take it 
Serbian tanks broke on the streets, the planes dropped some bombs and then they took off from Slovenia. But Serbian general was still left inside of the military facility in Novo Mesto. Maybe that's why they got so sensitive about me, maybe. Not only maybe because as a, uh, as a youngster I didn't, I didn't see myself with this kind of... I couldn't see eye to eye with these people because this was about everything but, you know, a civilized way. You know, ways that civilized nations pursue. So much violence and everything and they would just not want, you know, economy and stuff like this. They had other ideas, you know, it's like you would lay eggs in a, in a common basket and you would watch when you take those out and they would just take them like recklessly and do with them whatever they would want. That's pretty much how I saw Yugoslavia. That's, that's why the whole thing had fallen apart and it was not only related to Yugoslavia, it was also for the USSR. Now, if Yugoslavia probably would be based in Zagreb or USSR probably would be based in Warsaw and in Kiev, maybe one would still even exist and maybe would be doing well rather than what have happened with this Iron Curtain. Uh, thanks God. Um, you know, one day they placed me at the location, uh, the police, military police location, because the police officers, uh, it was like around the new year, and they were taking the time off, and so they placed me at the gate where the military police was, and you know, I, I was armed, well armed, um, at the gate, and then I had this general, he would come, and this individual was like extra, extra violent individual. Um, soldiers, he beaten up, he had beaten up soldiers already before. He would go and he would just beat up people, literally. Uh, he beat up the police officers, military police officers. He did, he beaten them up. Um, because he was training a karate and stuff like this. He was like a, like a hooligan, really, in the city. And this, this man held general rank, rank of the general in Slovenian military. Uh, and I just happened to be in that, you know, facility, which is in my hometown in Novo Mesto. And at the gate, and that's exactly where he had his uh, I'm not gonna say headquarter, but his place. Yeah, the headquarters were over there, not too far from this military police facility. And you know, it was about for the new year, and you know, I was just a polite person as I am. Um, I would ask everybody, you know, to, of course, just as rules are in the military, I would ask everybody to please identify, you know, when you go inside of the, when you want to go inside of the military facility, if you're in a civil clothing, especially, uh, you should possess a document, but it should be likewise, even for the people that are uh, uniformed. Well, this gentleman, when he arrived, he declined to identify himself. He said, if I don't know who he is, and I really didn't know who he was. Now, even if you know who the person is, uh, regardless of his rank, you should go ahead and properly identify a person. Uh, and so, since I did not know who he was, but the gentleman really was displaying a very violent attitude uh, was about to because I would not let him inside without him demonstrating me his proper ID and I'm really not sure whether they have posed me at that gate just to give him a bitter taste of 
uh, maybe I don't know of you know independent country or something like this or was it for some other reasons I have no idea uh, but yeah that he's gonna beat me up that he's gonna get inside uh, that he's gonna do I don't know what that he's gonna do and I was like okay 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 in that case is he gonna then like this uh, well and then in that case I said I'm uh, hold on a moment I'm gonna open the gate for you and you can go and I would like to see you inside of the boot and I opened the gate and he walked inside and then I ordered him to go inside of the boot and the idea was basically to call uh, for the military police officer which I already did call it earlier but the thing is that this military the journey you know somebody that is also present but is not at the gate he would just not answer the phone and so he wouldn't cooperate he was just gonna go like dismissing me and then I had no choice and then I ordered him and it was like about like a SWAT team uh, it wasn't exactly like you see me right now saying stuff I was like a police officer when he orders you basically to comply uh, basically get inside of the boot and so on and so forth sit down and so on and so forth and I tell you what I placed the, the gun and everything I placed down so that it would not make an impression on him uh, I wouldn't get into stuff like this that I would you know go and point rifle or something at, at the gentleman or something like this but I placed down the things and advise him that he just needs to go inside the boot and sit down so I can contact uh, the officer a police military police officer so they can identify him if this really is he or not and so on and you know he objected something like this but it did became to him obvious that whether he's going to comply uh, or probably even end up in the hospital that day because I wasn't going to take it uh, I was on duty I was in this first generation military generation of independent Slovenia and I was really 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 proud about doing my stuff I was taking one very seriously um, I was not up for a nonsense simple rules simple regulations in a military facility you're supposed to comply with basically or otherwise um, believe me he did comply because he knew me too I was from age like 18 I was training boxing martial arts uh, and I don't know why was it that they placed me at that gate um, maybe the man wanted to see how much he could push something like this in someone that is actually proud about his country proud about his identity uh, proud about independence of the country because again the guy was Serbian uh, maybe to see how much he can get out for nothing for less than nothing basically for the thuggery for the physical threats or was it really for some other reasons I don't know the only thing I know is that later on eventually he even apologized to me and he invited me to go uh, and train with him and stuff like this I'm not even saying that he is a bad person or anything like this I am just saying because this is related to the story you're about to hear and see that my doing basically what I'm doing I got to say that this isn't exactly the views I'd like to promote this is not the kind of abuse I'd like to promote um, basically identifying locations from the people that try to help me out 
in always coming out with the same conclusion, pointing out houses basically where I was brought by the Russians, where, in other words, I'm not going to say where, but here in Poland, pretty much, they were allowed to do anything they wanted to do, which is a message, I think, to the domestic population as well as to... Uh, watch out, I'm from Slovenia, I'm Slovenian. That's where I was born. I am American citizen, but I'm from Slovenia, uh, from Nova Mesta, just like Melania Trump is. Same age, too. So I don't know what the message here, you know, the stuff that I'm doing, it's, it's, it's confusing for me. Because um, people can start to feel that, you know, this is like, you know, they can do anything they want to do here, Russians, basically, like this. Uh, you know, and in, in that case, you know, is it, is it, is it even worthy to deal with um, a Varsal? And it concerns Kiev a lot. It concerns Kiev a lot because Germans, let's say, British, French, Americans that would like to partner otherwise with Warsaw, with Kiev, you know, they might actually have very rational um, doubts, very rational. Um, suspicion about the real identity about the real you know independence of this of this little eastern european states these are two the biggest they're not even little and with the czechs with the slovaks and all other eastern europeans baltics and so on it's actually much more powerful state could result than i should say union than what russia is russia is about 140 million people and out of those 140 million people, it's probably, I don't know, maybe half there, it's work. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's not productive at all. I think that Canada is more productive. Canada is more productive than Russia alone, I think, in my opinion. This is how low the whole thing is. Okay. It comes a lot to education. It comes to the area. It comes to... Uh, you know, how infrastructure the area is, industrialized, what type of industry and capability and so on. Not only how big the country is, uh, you know. That plays a lot, but Russia without natural resources, this, this would be totally, I think, outsourced country without anything really to offer. They get very little. When it comes to technology, other than what the Americans, British, gave them, they got close to nothing to offer, really. It's poor, this whole thing. Okay. And so, you know, the thing is, but when it comes to this attitude that when you, you know, let's say if you're German, let's say, who are you going to partner with? Number one, let's say, you're not going to get into the world of Slavic affairs and try to straight up whatever, let's say, Polish people alone cannot straight up in, in, in a Warsaw, let's say. You have this Kaczynski and then you have Morawiecki and Duda, his students basically, uh, and a bunch of others that are doing nothing else but complying with, uh, you know, with whatever they are told to do. Pretty much this is a Moscow politic. And so... If it, isn't, if it isn't for the Polish people bad enough that you have a plane that, that crashes over there in Russia with a hundred on board and is not investigated for the entire nine years by someone that actually claims that he is, is not only a president's brother, but he is that have lost his brother his own brother on board and his wife and stuff like this, who is, by the way, Belarus and stuff like this. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, people should be allowed to pay respect to that people, I think, if this isn't deep enough. Um, and stuff that I do, I don't know. This is just 
how can somebody else go out there and if you don't even know what you have inside of your house you expect him to go and clean your mess I mean how can somebody then take you seriously and so what what the Germans do now I understand a little bit more of this what they do is they, they they make the deal with the one that is obviously is the biggest and the one that does crap in our countries and it's a crap that goes around seems like unnoticed that's why this video that's why the prelude into this kind of stuff so you can a little bit understand more about who I am exactly how I see things why I see things as such uh, and so on one time I thought that Russia would actually be something in 2017 but you know this isn't the way this is just this is just a country that is just too much too much set apart in in I don't know in something that I should not not anybody normal should even try to understand I think you know this isn't a country that would be the same for the Ukrainians or Poles or Czechs or others as the United States is for let's say Scandinavians Germans British and uh, French and others definitely this is not the same but what scary part is that you have so many Poles in the US and other Eastern Europeans too and, and you know, they, they are doing well and to me it seems like I don't know I don't know I told the gentleman over there at the gate you know cuz he is afraid too everybody's afraid here the only one that's not afraid that's myself police is afraid even the military is afraid you know It was like assisting about, you know, how to see things this, you know. And the way I see them is that you partner basically with the, with the one that gives. And meaning that gives in return, gives you and you also give him. Not with someone that does nothing else but takes and shoots bombs across the border this isn't this isn't the way to go I mean this is what I'm trying to explain all right so you can understand me where I'm coming from you can understand a little bit better who I am uh, hell as well as mine maybe that was maybe one of the things that that made this KGB this Udba people um, send this assassins this this Melania over there to Miami after me uh, they, all, they all came with me over there to the US I have no idea maybe I just triggered the memory a little bit because I saw the gate I saw him he was in he's he's a, he still works in the military and then this issue is how he tried to help me out with this kind of stuff and then exactly what came out of it and you know I don't know I am just uh, I see things different I definitely do see things different I told him I'm angry over there Donald Trump maybe in a way I shouldn't be because you know but then again I think I should be because you know this I never was motivated in a, I never was really motivated in in that I would be motivated in you know in, in in this kind of life that that you would just be out there and I don't know you just it was hard for me you know because I knew that I'm paying the price sacrifice 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 you know the worst thing mistake I made it I collected the money that was the biggest punishment because the money that I managed to save eventually was used against me by this allowed me employment and I had to use my own resources basically $45,000 in savings just to buy me a bread fuel and stuff like this and move from one country to another this is not good I don't know I don't know really what you know 
what conclusion would be on this if you know polish people if ukrainian people would understand what i'm trying to say and learn something from this i wouldn't be angry at him at all because i would do something good this thing would produce you know but you know some kind of a can of the leaves and stuff like this like they brainwashed me with the stuff like this uh, not interested but thanks anyway i'm staying here in poland with the polish people i saw a dude giving out give out 500 zloty per child something like this for this election so basically kremlin is like now buying elections just before the elections uh, you see teachers in Poland it's not so bad is it before elections uh, who gives a shit what is after elections and what the whole where the whole thing is heading right am I correct about that all right um, first a little about what in this thing this was this was so much brainwash by the Russians in real time, have me walk back and forth. And first, you're gonna see this location, Viesh. And then it was, and then it was this other location also. And I remember the gentleman because he said, let's see if they're gonna F with the military. This is a military facility, this and that. And they did. They did in his city too. They did F with that too. In the end, what the most likely was, can you imagine this? What the most likely was, I pointed out, it's like a middle size, maybe about, I don't know, 10, 12 story building something like this next to his okay that was the most unlikely wise can you imagine people that much they brainwashed and again the last brainwash basically when it comes to MK Ultra recall memory recall this is the one basically that counts the most so shocking and yeah I was inside of this military installation and he knows I was inside of the military installation. There is something about that military installation. Donald Trump said, before you go inside of the military installation, you have to tell something about this place. I don't know what to tell. There was something, there was something. You cannot see it from the front gate, but there is something behind that gate. There is like some kind of, it's like, I'm not sure, like, I'm trying to record it's like some kind of memorial or something like this that they did, something like this. They cannot see it, but I was inside, and he said, I know he was, because we were there. Donald Trump was there. I don't know how much is it true, but they had the Russians there too. How much this hurts me? Nothing in this world hurts me. If they didn't have Russians, they had Polish officers imitating Russians or something like that. I think that it was a Polish commander that would not want to give like a negative first on Russians at all. He declined that this is France and so on. He actually saved his ass life because then through the Varshov, I believe, if it's possible at all, they got Russians inside. And I'm not going to even say who, because I don't want to go that far. But it was bad, bad, bad enough. Then I was told, you see, and so on. So, Varshov, Mr. Duda, Moraviechki, especially Moraviechki, that's the one that Kaczynski insisted he's gonna stay there for eternity uh, i wouldn't even go about kaczynski this is very very bad stuff 
again it's got nothing to do with the gentleman here gentleman just wanted to help out basically that's all these are not his views he's got nothing against the russians nobody's got nothing against the russians <laughs> including myself but damn it i'm the only one that dares to speak about and go for it mk ultra that's a brainwash mk ultra is nothing else than brainwash that's all that is that's all that it comes to mk ultra mk ultra is just used to distort reality and guess who is the one advantaged if you like well the one that has the right to brainwash and use more extreme tool than the other one i should say the other party I don't think this is difficult to figure out who the party, the most advanced, advantaged, <laughs> not advanced, but advantaged party was in this case. This is a difficult thing to figure out. Regarding the Donald Trump, and this whole thing, because this thing, the Polish people need to understand this, this thing was actually taken, like pulled, from the hands of Scandinavians. My case was handled by the Scandinavians. Norwegians handled my case. Swedes handled my case. And they gave this case to Poland. And I would just like to know why. I know that Polish people are ready for a change. They want change. They really want change. But regarding the Donald Trump, in whom I do not believe deeply, I should say, when I see that people start to take us seriously for the good reason, you know, people in the West, like British, Germans, French, and so on. And what that's going to mean is that they're going to clearly, you know, advantage us here in Poland, you know, take us as it is seriously that we're going to have a foreign policy, domestic and foreign policy that will be strictly in force as the one of the sovereign country basically that a patriotism which is instilled in polish people they're very patriotic people beautiful people i like it very much it really appeals to me for many reasons this is one of the main reasons will not be taught for the wrong reasons just as is my case in my case kaczynski got me all excited about Poland and so on and then basically I should say got me excited for what he, uh, he thought are gonna be the wrong reasons he found like very abusive ways which he attempted to use basically just push me out to just you know alienate me from what he initially suggested and basically this is what maybe i'm trying to say all along in this video when i see some real changes when i see some real stuff happening i don't care maybe even to donald trump um then i'm gonna start to um you know, this is just a big case. This is just 20, 40 years of my life. It's a lot. And so I want to see, I want to get some reality on why this case was given here, given to these people here. I want to see this from the people alone. Well, that much about this video. Thanks for watching. Till next time. All right, let's do that, Gate. I'm going to zoom so you can see my backpack right there. You can see it. That's a backpack. 
a gate. Um, it's basically it's basically like this. If I would go, let's say something like this. Yeah, it would be exactly something something like this. I think something like that. Something like this. You would have you would have this point of entry, and then you would have. Uh, uh, let's let's do it like this, like like some kind of point of entry here that you come inside, and then they let you inside, and then I'm not sure whether you go, you turn like right, and you would see like you see my backpack right there. No, it's not. It's not. It's not this type of whatever that thing is. It's something beautiful, but I, I'm not sure what it is. It's something. It's like. It's like some kind of. Um, I don't know. Some kind of statue. Something like this. Some. Some kind of. Um, I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. I can't recall. Is it a globe? Is it something like this? I don't know what it is, but it looks good. It looks damn good. Um, there is also a possibility that you go inside, like you, you would go like inside like this, and it's actually behind something. Um, as you go inside, there is something, and behind that thing is, is that thing, okay? It's something like this. Folks, this is... was in 2015. Maybe even 2013, 2015, probably 2000, maybe 2013. Um, this is the city about 30 kilometers from here, where I supposedly never was. It's like Ozorkov, where I supposedly never was. It's about 10 kilometers from here in the opposite side of Zgersh. And sure, I never was in 2018 and 2019, but I know what the construction was in this city. One time I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to do some video about the postal office and stuff like this now. But that's also another one that I'm not supposed to know anything about, but I know. I was there, they had me there, just like the city I'm talking about right now. And a gentleman kind of acknowledges that I know how it's inside, because I know. So, that's how that is. In Poland so far, I have only heard for the German agents. I have heard about the German agents. I have seen how the Jewish witch was beaten up. I've seen that too. Uh, but no trace of KGB so far in Poland. Yeah. Uh, nothing from the man whose brother supposedly was killed uh, in a plane accident. Uh, this is yet another location we were in, this building here, but this is not the one. The right one is the first one. Uh,
Uh, this is where this place is located. It's probably about... This is probably about 30 kilometers from here, 25 kilometers or so.